What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. Look who brought their car back. We've got Glenn's Trans Am back in the garage. We're doing some off-season maintenance, some suspension work, some fuel system work, and uh, some regular scheduled services, transmission service, oil change, uh, all that stuff. We're gonna get this thing cocked, locked, and ready to rock. So as soon as the weather gets nice again, Glenn is ready to go cruising. All right, so like I said, nothing major, but a lot of little things that are gonna make the car better and also make sure it's just prepped and ready for the 2022 summer car season, right? So we've got oil and filter for an oil change, transmission, transmission filter and gasket for a transmission service. We've got a new fuel sending unit. Now, uh, Glenn's fuel gauge isn't working and I'm 99% sure this is the, his issue. And it's cheaper to just buy a sending unit than it is to buy the fuel level sensor, which doesn't make any sense to me, but we've got that new sending unit. Now Glenn is upgrading to a larger fuel pump. That's gonna be for some upgrades I think maybe next off season, the winter of 2022, 2023. New rear coil springs and isolators, uh, new rear bump stops, a new tunnel cross member, new fuel filter. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. At least that's it for now. So uh, let's start getting this stuff apart. I do wanna show you how the transmission looks inside. Uh, I'm expecting to see pretty good looking fluid and minimal material in there, but it's, it's a brand new transmission. You remember we put that in last winter. So I want to make sure that that service gets done. So from there on, he should be able to run it for about 30,000 miles without any, without having to service it again. But that first service after, you know, the first season, uh, I think that's really important. Oil change should do an oil change at least once a year. If you don't hit your mileage increment once a year is just standard practice, good idea for an oil change, especially if the car spends a lot of time sitting. Uh, the rear coil springs and isolators, as well as bump stops. Now, the car has, I don't know a way to describe it other than a weird shimmy. Uh, when you're accelerating hard, and getting up to like highway speed and beyond. It doesn't do it accelerating from a stop. It doesn't do it, you know, accelerating from a roll to about 45, 50. But once you get above that 50 mile an hour mark, like you're getting onto the highway under heavy throttle, the rear end just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel quite right. There's two, there's something moving back there that shouldn't be. So we're gonna look and see if I can't find what that is and what's causing that while we're putting all these new parts on. We're also, I'm going to drop the tank for the new fuel sending unit and pump. I, I know there's a million billion people that say, just cut a trap door in there, just cut a hole in the trunk, fold it up, do your work, put it back down. GM should have done it that way from the factory. Guys, that trunk acts as a firewall between you and the fuel tank. If you're ever rear-ended and somehow a fire starts in the back of the car, that hole that you cut your little trap door has now breached the firewall and reduces the amount of protection you have in the event of that accident. So if you're asking me, drop the tank. It literally, in my opinion, takes less, less effort to just drop the tank than it does to pull the carpet out of the way, cut a hole in the trunk, put it all back, put it back, like just, just do it the correct way. So we're gonna get that done and uh, get all these fluids draining out of this thing. Let's go. All right, team. So I've got the transmission pan down. Looks really good. 
I don't see any little shinies or flakes or glitteries. Just a little bit of clutch material, but that's what I would expect from a brand new transmission as all the clutches get seated in. So, yeah, that looks really good. That's a nice, healthy transmission. That's what we wanted to see. So I'll get the pan all cleaned out and get the magnet all cleaned off. Replace the filter with a new filter and then get it all put back together with a new gasket and uh, and then top it back off with transmission fluid. Looks really good. I'm really happy about that. All right. Pan nice and clean. Magnet nice and clean. Got the new filter poked back up into the transmission. And uh, I'll put it back together. Guys, if you're doing a transmission service, if the transmission doesn't come with a reusable gasket like a 4L80E does, get a cork gasket. These cork gaskets seal up better than the rubber gaskets or the paper composite ba gaskets. Um, so I really recommend a cork transmission gasket if you can get one. And like I said, if it doesn't already have a reusable plastic and rubber O-ring gasket like the later model 4L80Es came with. So, we'll get this poked back up in there, bolt it up, uh, all the bolts torqued to spec, and then fill it back up with transmission fluid. All right, everybody, it's going smoothly so far. Got the engine oil and filter changed. I've got the transmission service done and put back together. New filter, new pan gasket, everything inside cleaned off. Uh, I've got the new fuel filter on it. So, before I go any farther, I'm just going to start it up, run it through the gears, uh, make sure that the transmission is fully topped off, make sure that the engine oil is fully topped off, and then I'll move on to dropping the fuel tank and replacing the fuel sending unit and the pump. All right, should start right up. So I'm going to let that sit, let all the oil run back into the oil pan, transmission dipstick tube clear out a bit so I'm getting a true accurate reading, uh, and focus on getting the fuel tank dropped down out of it and the rear coil springs and isolators installed. Woo! Many, many minutes later. All right, team. Well, after a lot of... <laughs> Disassembly and a little bit of profanity. I finally got the fuel tank out of this thing. This is the first steel fuel tank I've dropped out of one of these things and it is, it's substantially more of a pain than the later plastic fuel tanks. Uh, the plastic fuel tanks are much more flexible and the fill neck 
has can be removed, which makes it 10,000 times less difficult to get out of the car. So anyway, it's done, it's out. I'm gonna get the bolts undone here for where the sending unit is. We'll get that out. We'll get the new sending unit assembled with the new pump. And then get it all put back together. I'm gonna dump all the gas out of it while I have this thing out to make it a little easier to manage getting it back up into the car. All right, team. So we've got our old sending unit out. I got our new sending unit right here on the bench. Then we've got our new aeromotive fuel pump. So what I need to do is I'm going to use the old one, figure out how the fuel pump basket comes apart so I can actually swap out the fuel pump. And then I'll take the new one apart, get the new pump installed, and then put the whole unit, the whole sending unit into the tank. So once I figure out how that thing comes apart, I'll bring you back and I'll show you and we'll get the new pump put into the new sending unit and then get it all put back together. Five minutes later. All right, I figured this thing out. So. All right, so your little fuel sending unit guy sits right down in here. You pop the two rubber hoses off and then this one is a push lock connector. You can take that off. And then once you get it out, you're left with this piece here. Now this piece, the top and the bottom are glued together. But if you ever so gently put a flathead screwdriver in the gap and twist, you can work that glued connection apart. Once you have it apart, well, you drop it, so you break it. Hopefully that didn't just break. I don't think it did. And then that gives you access so you can get the top part off. And then there's your pump. So now I'll get the new pump put in place of this one. And then put it all back together. Whee! All right, team. It's all back together. Got our new Aeromotive fuel pump installed and the new sending unit. So Glenn should have not only a good fuel gauge reading now, but plenty of fuel supplied for the future upgrades, probably next year. All new hoses inside, nice solder and heat shrunk connection for the connector for the Aeromotive pump. All the fuel lines on, retainer ring in place. So uh, the only thing left to do now is get this back into the tank, get it bolted down, and then get the tank back up into the car and then put everything back together. <laughs> Whew. Welcome back. All right, it's a couple days later. I've been uh, chipping away at getting this thing back together since where I last left off and I think I left off with getting the pump back in the tank. So I've got the whole rear end put back together. I've got the new bump stops and spacers installed, the new rear coil springs, everything tightened up in the back, everything, uh, everything where it should be hooked up, tied up, secured, out of the way. So uh, what I have left to do, I need to get the the new tunnel brace put in and then uh, I want to start it up double check the transmission fluid make sure that's full double check the engine oil make sure that's full and then I think that's it so almost there all right 
Engine oil looks good. Transmission fluid looks good. I'm gonna start it up, run it through the gears, then put it in neutral, check the transmission. And then this project's done. She's uh, cock locked and ready to rock for this summer's cruising season. Prime it a couple times again since I had the fuel system opened up again. Alright, let's see what we get. everybody so I'm getting back to work on Glenn's car man it's been a while uh, I've had Glenn's car here for way too long uh, but I guess the perks Glenn your car got to stay cozy in my garage for the entire time it's been here so that's a perk right but uh Glenn dropped off some new fog lights these are called bling lights. <laughs> I just noticed that name, bling lights. So these look like they're gonna fit pretty much where the factory lights did. Wow, that is good packaging. They got the little halo, bright light. Looks like they came with some instructions. Yeah, so I'm gonna get these installed in place of the factory lights. See how in-depth, how difficult they are to uh, get installed. And then uh, bring you back as we go. This is the last thing I have to do on Glenn's car and then it'll be finished. So I want to try to wrap this up and get it back to him. Three days later. All right, team. So got the new fog lights in place. I was able to use the factory brackets and the brackets that these lights came with to adjust it and pretty much i mean they look like those are the factory fog lights if you ask me so uh i've got them wired up using the factory fog light switch and since these are halo lights I wired it for the halos to come on with the daytime running lights. So let me show you. All right, I'm gonna turn the key on. 
And there are the halos. And then with the factory fog lights switch, the factory fog light switch, there they are. On, off. On, off. All like GM put it there. So that pretty much wraps up this portion. I have to get it out of the garage now and take it for a test drive, make sure everything's good. Uh, see if I was able to eliminate that weird shimmy it had under heavy acceleration and uh, then get this thing back to Glenn. I'm excited. I love working on this car. Glenn, thanks again for trusting me to take care of your your beautiful baby here, and uh, I think he's going to have a, a great season of cruising and driving and just enjoying the car. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Not a lot of like uh, super in-depth tech in this one, but a super cool car that has been well-maintained and taken care of and is a pleasure to work on. Thanks again for watching. Until the next video, take care.